are from an eco-friendly sandbag to floating breakwaters. These are among eight new research projects Singapore is studying as possible solutions to protect its coastlines. Are there among a slew of support and partnerships announced today at the Singapore International Water Week? These sandbags could soon be one of Singapore's defences against coastal erosion. It's made from jute, a type of plant fibre filled with sand and eco-friendly materials. It acts as a barrier on the coast. Once the casing disintegrates, it becomes sand for the shorelines. And this is one of eight new research projects that the Coastal Protection and Flood Resilience Institute is supporting. It's a very meaningful for our project. With the research support, we will be able to develop new solutions for coastal protection and we will also be able to develop new products like eco cement and which can be commercialized, which can be part of products which can benefit the economy. The announcement came during the Singapore International Water Week where Sustainability and Environment Minister Grace Fu underscored how Singapore is susceptible to rising sea levels. Around 30% of our island is less than 5 metres above mean sea level and potentially affected by the combined impact of rising sea levels, storm surges and high tides. Enhancing coastal and flood resilience it's a complex endeavour that requires new capabilities and skill sets and coordinated planning and implementation. Also launched at the event, a new coastal protection chapter to bring together industry, institutes of higher learning and government agencies. So we want to do that and from there then we want to upskill the industry and, uh, up, and, and uh, just bringing all the players together and uh, also giving a platform for PUB and the Singapore government agencies to be able to reach out to, to the industry and for the industry to feedback uh, to the government agencies. Plus, a new deal among the institute, industry players and academics providing more opportunities to work together, as well as a request for proposal for solutions like sustainable materials or sensors for transporting sediment that can support coastal protection and flood management efforts. Well, we're joined by Ong Sichen. He's Chief Executive of Singapore's National Water Agency, the PUB. Thanks so much for joining us this evening, Mr Ong. Now, this year, as you were just talking before this, uh, International Water Week, we talk about utilities, sewage, supplies. But this year, for the very first time, we have a new pillar of climate adaptation. That's right. Uh, and uh, it's something that uh, we have started out this year and specifically we have started a new track uh, on the coastal and flood resilience, basically looking at uh, inland flood as well as uh, coastal protection against sea level rise. This is something new for this edition of the Sinter Singapore International Water Week, uh, which happens every two years. And so far, I think it's been uh, a moderate success. I think this morning we had the Coastal and Flood Resilience Leader, Sum Leader Summit. And two days ago, I just chaired a roundtable with uh, over 20 water and city leaders from around the world talking about the issues of inland floods and coastal protection. All right, so uh, flooding, protection, resilience. Now, part of that is constructing walls and embankments for as much as 80% of our coastline. Your feeling is that that may not be enough. Well, I think if you look at it, I think traditionally sea walls, revetments, buns have been the traditional solution uh, for coastal protection. Uh, you can see that around the world, people are looking to more innovative and more useful solutions, uh, and we are doing the same. You will see that uh, we announced a Long Island project not too long ago, and that too is a solution that Singapore is proposing uh, to deal with sea level rise, among other things. I mean, it serves multifunctions. It is going to create new land for housing and for, for parks, but it also creates a new reservoir. And actually, in our conversations with other countries, we find that uh, this is not unique to Singapore. Other countries are also looking at such multifunctional solutions. In fact, one of the most interesting things that we came, up across, that we came across in this recent discussion at the Singapore International Water Week is that Copenhagen too is looking at building an artificial island across its harbour, very similar in concept to our Long Island. And so I think it's been a good discussion this week and to understand that you know, we're not in this alone in Singapore and we have uh, other countries to work with, to collaborate with, to learn from and to share ideas with. 
All right, you mentioned Copenhagen as one example. In fact, every year, the COP summit, we've got all the small island nations being particularly enthused about real action, or actually not enthused, angered about the lack of action on climate change. So what is Singapore learning from other countries apart from Copenhagen, uh, from Denmark? So, so I think that uh, we have uh, taken a look at how other people are preparing for sea level rise in particular, uh, and how they are looking at uh, that uh, as well as the inland flood conditions, uh, extreme weather events. So one of the things that we concluded as we discussed uh, at this, the round table was that you know, Singapore's approach of adaptive pathways where we build into consideration the uncertainty of climate change projections and we solution as we go along and have solutions that, are, that can be adjusted and adapted depending on how the projections turn out is the correct one. We are not the only ones taking that approach. Uh, the British, the UK is also taking that approach for their Thames Estuary project. And so that's a good thing. One thing, though, that came out from that is the importance of community involvement, um, not just doing it by yourself, whether it's the city or the government, but to do that with other stakeholders. It's a multi-stakeholder game and everybody needs to be part of it. So for PUB, Singapore's National Water Agency, we have been involved in coastal conversations, We've been involved in engagement uh, sessions with uh, the Long Island plan. And the idea is to bring on board all the stakeholders who might want to have a say in how the solution is designed. People who live, people who have businesses along the coastline, people who have activities in the water at the coastline, people who want to have a say in what that solution looks like for Singapore's future coastline. All right, that's very important, as you mentioned, getting a buy-in for implementation of any policy. A policy also very much informed by science and research. So the PUB announcing a second tranche of research projects today. How do these add to, I'm sure, is a considerable body of existing research on what Singapore needs in terms of this area of challenge? So indeed, I think there's been a great body of research in construction methods. And I mentioned before that uh, some coastal protection solutions like seawalls, revetments, buns are not new. But we are trying to see whether there are new solutions that can be brought on board and whether we can uh, have research to bring us some of these new solutions as we go forward. So we already have a first tranche of uh, research projects that have been announced, I think, last year. So this is the next tranche, I think, of eight projects uh, by the coastal Protection and Flood Resilience Institute Singapore, which is our centre of excellence that we intend to host all the key research programmes that we have under both coastal protection. OK, final question here, Mr Ong. Uh, you mentioned bringing in people on the ground. Th these decisions affect them. Uh, academia, so research, and industry as well. How do all these different parties work together to deliver the kind of solutions that we need to be seeing? Final question. Well, I think in particular for delivering solutions, uh, in terms of coming up with new creative solutions that are adapted uh, and suited for Singapore's coastline and geography, we do need research work to be done in our inst institutions of higher learning, in our universities, to look at our coastlines, the way they behave, whether there are new materials that can uh, help us be put in place for coastal protection infrastructure. But what we do need in the end are companies that can take these solutions from the lab to the actual site and to build uh, viable solutions for Singapore. So that's why I think we do need a, uh, uh, various stakeholders to come to play. I think the people who are involved to, to co-create, to co think about what they would like for a solution for their coastline, but at the same time, the people who can come together to come up with ideas to implement, to deliver the, the protection they need. PUB, of course, playing a very big part in bringing uh, we all do our these best. different parties together. Thanks so much for coming this evening, Mr Ong Sichen. He's Chief Executive of PUB. Thank you for coming. Thank you.